untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video, as we continue the alternate win condition week on the channel. Today it's time for Liliana's Contract, a 5-man enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw 4 cards at the cost of 4 life, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 4 or more demons with different names, you win the game. This used to be a pretty difficult alternate win condition to achieve, often a win more card, since a lot of demons tend to be around 4 or 5 mana, but over the years they've added some cheaper demons, especially changelings as well, which also count as demons that we can play for maybe one or two mana and then it's going to be much more realistic to actually curve into our Liliana's contract to win the game. So that's why we're playing this in Historic as opposed to Explorer because there's way more cheap demons we can include starting at one mana with three copies of Changeling Outcast which is a changeling so it has all creature types including demon, cannot block and cannot be blocked and then three copies of the Universal Automaton, another 1-1 one -one changeling. Then we also have some cheap removal to keep up against the aggressive creature decks in the format, two copies of Cut Down, four copies of Fatal Push. Then at two mana there's two copies of Blade of the Oni, a 3-1 with Menace can also be reconfigured to make a 5-5 instead. And then Dream Devourer is a strange one, an 0-3 saying each non-land card in your hand without Fortel has Fortel, and its Fortel cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by 2, so we can pay two mana to exile one of our cards in hand at any point in our turn, and then we can cast that card at a 2 mana discount on a later turn. And then whenever we foretell a card, we can also pump up the Dream Devourer, which can happen at instant speed, so it can potentially catch the opponent of guard as long as it's in your own turn. And that's also potentially a way to set up a turn 4 Liliana's contract by foretelling it on turn 3 and then casting it on turn 4. Then we also have two copies of Metallic Mimic, which does not have the Changeling ability, but when it enters we can choose Demon, and then it will also become a Demon, and then future Demons enter with an extra plus one plus one counter on them. And then at three mana we've got two copies of Black Market Connections, which is perfect for this deck. We can every turn choose to pay life to make treasure, draw cards, or make a Shapeshifter. That one's pretty pricey at three life, but the Shapeshifter also has the Changeling ability, so will also count as an extra Demon for us. And then drawing extra cards and making treasure can also be helpful in assembling the four demons or maybe ramping into a turn four contract by making that treasure. The treasure also very helpful at enabling revolt for fatal push to potentially kill larger creatures. Then we have two copies of Varagoth, a 2-3 legendary demon with death touch, and when we attack with Varagoth we can boast for one and a black, and then search our library for any card and put it on top of our deck, so that can also help find contract. And then we've got a few one-offs, Adaptive Automaton will pump up all our demons, and then the Bloodline Pretender also picks up a plus one counter whenever another demon enters. And then I'm playing the full playset of Faceless Agent, the only real alchemy card in the deck, but it is quite good here as a 2-2 changeling that counts as a demon, and when it enters we can seek a creature card of the most prevalent creature type in our library, which is going to be demon. So this is just a nice two for one that helps us get to four demons for contract. And then at 4 mana, 2 copies of Crippling Fear, which has been an all-star in testing, a sorcery giving all creatures minus 3 minus 3 that aren't of the chosen type. So we can just name a demon, and then all non-demons will get minus 3 minus 3, which is a pretty nice way to beat other creature decks in the format. And then our mana base includes 4 copies of Castle Lockthwain as an extra card draw engine, as well as 4 copies of Radiant Fountain to gain some life back, to maybe offset the life loss from Black Market Connections, and of course our own Liliana's Contract, which will also cost 4 life. And then a 17 Swamps and Abandoned Mire can also be channeled to get a demon back. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a functional hand, especially if we find our third land in time for Connections. Some early removal, and then lots of ways to find more demons. Seems worth it to kill Soul Warden, can be an enabler for all sorts of life gain synergies. Speaking of life gain, we have a bit of it ourselves. Backup Soul Warden, and a veteran. Okay, play connections. And then I'm fine offering the trade here that our opponent's going to accept. And then next turn we may choose all three modes with connections, we'll see. Definitely drawing and making a treasure, unsure about whether I need to make a shapeshifter. And then Varagoth could also be important to find contract by boasting. 
our opponent is playing green, so this could be a Heliod's Infinite Squirrel deck with uh, Scurry Oak. A lurking Roper instead can also set up some infinite combos. So not loving my chances here. I think we'll go all three. And then play Vergoth. And may as well attack. So next turn I can boast, get Contract, and still play Faceless Agent. There's an Aura that they can put on the Roper to tap it, make a token. And then they would be able to make infinite tokens, gain infinite life, and yeah, the tutor's gonna look it up. So now I need to find Fatal Push as my answer to Roper once we enable Revolt with our treasure here. Presence of Gaunt. Liliana's Contract. Well, I guess if our opponent gains infinite life and makes infinite tokens, we could still win with Contract, but that would require me to have Contract in play and four demons, which currently isn't the case unless we find another cheap demon. But uh, I guess we can give it a try. Did find Fatal Push, so that answers our problem. But we may also be able to set up the win. And yeah, Changeling Outcast will do. So we've got our four demons. I've got Fatal Push with Revolts to kill Roper. So even if they gain infinite life, it doesn't matter. They're not actually dealing infinite damage yet. So one unknown in hand that could mess things up. Even a land like Boseju could go after our enchantments, so good to have a backup. Opponents reading our four different demons. And a Shana is what they had left. That's fine. Yeah, it would have been pretty difficult to win with just damage from our creatures. So good to have an alternate win condition. Opponent's gonna go for the presence. And we've got a present for the opponent. Get to untap, and Contract should win the game. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing cheap interaction, but we can curve 1, 2, 3, and then connections can hopefully draw into more answers. Opponents, a blue deck. Secret Keeper is gonna mill us. Alright, so we know what we're up against. At least against mill I can afford to pay a lot of life to my own connections. But also have to be careful not to uh, draw too many cards. Another Secret Keeper. It's going to be tricky to win with Liliana's Contract. But there it is, so we'll still give it a shot. And then can hit for four. Play Connections. And for starters, probably going to choose all three modes. But then we might slow down on the card draw. Opponents does have potential counter spell mana available. So would not be too surprised if they counter contract. But I don't have a lot of alternatives. I guess I could reconfigure Blade onto the Outcast. That doesn't sound amazing. Okay. Possible they want us to resolve contract since it draws four cards. But of course we're just one demon away from winning with it. Alright, just a frantic inventory to draw. So contract resolves. And there's another demon faceless agent. So we have four different ones. A rune crab could die to crippling fear as well. But Contract wins in our upkeep, so even if we have an empty library, we would still win in that same turn. So unless they have a bound spell for one of my demons, we should be good to go. 
So I'm still going to draw with connections just to find maybe a redundant demon so we have five in case of a bounce spell. 31 cards remaining, so still a long way to go. Fatal Push can kill the Cramp as well. And then, sure, we'll make another Shapeshifter just in case. And then play Agents. Play Automaton, and we can push the Cramp. Okay. Well, let's see what our opponent comes up with. Probably hang on to the treasure in case they have like a mass bounce spell for all my creatures. Playing an extra outcast probably doesn't make a difference. Alright, they did have a fading hope for blade. So if they have another one, they can potentially take us off four demons. Twenty-six cards remaining still. Opponent reading Liliana's contract. Automaton is indeed a demon. Cook off an email for essentially ten here with the drowned secrets. Get to untap, contract on the stack, and we win the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand leaves a lot to be desired, despite having some good interaction. Probably need more card draw to get to our contract. This is better. And could see getting rid of the automaton. Hope to play turn three connections. And then that can maybe set up a turn four contract. Opponent red white. And a Gavalier Stone Equipment deck. Could cut down the Gavalier right now. I think we'll wait. In case our opponent tries to set up a hammer. And there's a Blade Master for now. So now I may want to just cut down the Blade Master. So next turn I can tap out for connections. And not take as much damage. We will be able to play Liliana's Contract. And then we just need to find our demons. Connections can also make a shapeshifter. And Brunor is next. So luckily dodged a hammer so far. So probably fine to choose all three modes. Could play Varagoth to discourage some attacks on the ground. Or play Agents, and then there's a decent chance I find another demon I can cast afterwards. Uh, let's just play the Contract. And then next turn I can maybe play enough demons to win the game. Okay, we'll have to discard to hand size. Fatal Push also a good draw, especially with a treasure from Connections to enable Revolt. Can maybe take out Brunor. So then we're looking at Fatal Push. Metallic Mimic and Varagoth, so then I'll still need one demon. Opponent draws with her in gate, and we'll take five. So not a lot of life to spare, so from now on probably just making treasure with the connections. And then we'll stick to the plan, Mimic, name demon, Varagoth, and then we'll hang on to Fatal Push I guess. If our opponent plays a hammer, kill Brunor in response before they can equip for zero mana. They've got a Sigardos 8 as well. Another Gavalier. If we need to trade Varagoth, so be it. Still have an agent which likely finds another demon to get to 4. Opponent is attacking all out. Okay, so what's most likely to happen? That our opponent puts a hammer on the trampling Gavalier. So, then we'll just block Brunor with Varagoth. It's going to be a chance for glory. In response, Fatal Push Brunor. I 
opponent's creatures are indestructible, they get to take an extra turn. But unless there's a hammer in our future, we should be good. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems functional. Some early removal, and then uh, connections as our card draw engine. Opponent's aggressively mulliganing, so points towards maybe a combo deck. Hopefully our removal will come in handy. Okay, red, green, and a minion of the mighty. Yeah, definitely have the answers for it. So I could try and wait for the opponent to go all in on minion, since we have two removal spells. Wouldn't recommend it if we didn't have two, because then they could have a protection spell as well. But this seems worth the wait. Make them use all their resources here. Titan strength. So can let that resolve and still cut down. Even their opponent does get to scry. Opponent attacks, so just hitting for three. That's fine. So just gonna attack for one. Not gonna tap out for connections. Just keep my two removal spells up as opposed to play blade, keep up a single one. Right, opponent's finally going for scale up, so now we have to cut down. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand is missing. Maybe a bit of card draw and of course contract, but we have castle eventually, so... Seems fine. I have a bit of removal, both Fatal Push and Crippling Fear. What's our opponent up to? Blue-black. And ninjas. Okay. Ornithopter also a good enabler for ninjutsu. So, no point in attacking. Gonna wait for them to ninjutsu and then Fatal Push. Although if they ninjutsu, the 4 mana ninja, I wouldn't be able to take it out. But since they have two enablers, there's no point in trying to kill one of them. Alright, Ninja of Deep Hours, also 4 mana, so can Fatal push it. So we'll have to wait for Crippling Fear. Opponent gets to replay Ornithopter to enable their next ninja. It can play Vargoth at least to discourage any attacks. Opponent bounces Vargoth so they can get in with the ninja again. Alright, so the card draw's adding up. Probably see another ninjutsu here. Another ninja of deep hours. Alright, at least we can take both of them out next turn. Alongside Ornithopter and Thousand Faced Shadow. Don't get to call your opponent a coward in every game. Connections is good alongside Fatal Push, as the treasure can enable revolt for us. Another thousand faced. Okay, so attack for one. Opponent probably takes it, and then we'll play connections, keep a fatal push. And then I likely want to push the shadow. Can put a stop in their upkeep. Definitely don't want to wait for them to attack. Alright, so no ninjutsu this turn at least. Found a fountain. So with the fountain maybe I can afford to choose all three modes. Varagoth can find contracts, so that's another four life gone. The shapeshifter might be a little greedy. And then let's see, this turn I would have six mana total, so I could play Varagoth and Automaton. Sure. Alright, there's Contract. 
think we still want to stabilize the ground first. They may have another fading hope. So definitely not attacking. And then we have our four demons and our contract, so we'll see. Bonin could have some hand disruption to mess things up. Alright, our opponent passes. Just go for treasure now. And then contract into outcast, can set up the win next turn. Alright, let's hope this resolves. It does. Play outcast. Pass it back. And hope for the best. Opponent draws. They need some sort of removal. Even a Soaring City bouncing contract could be effective, since I may not have the life to spare to replay it, unless we find another Radiant Fountain. Alright, looks like our opponent may have disconnected. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Could use a two drop, perhaps. And then we'll need to hit our land drops to get to 5 for contract. But uh, got quite a bit of interaction between fail push and crippling fear. Opponent red whites can play a turn on outcast. So then we just need two more demons. Opponent a sliver deck apparently. Diffusion pretty good against fatal push. Second contract was not what we needed. So I won't be able to take out any of the opponent's slivers here. But uh, Crippling Fear at least should be quite effective. Predatory to give plus one plus one. And our opponent hangs back. Okay, now we'll go for Connection to make sure we get to four mana for Crippling Fear. May as well attack since we cannot block. So we're about to take a lot of damage. Double strike from Bone Scythe, yeah. Another Crippling Fear. So, maybe draw a card and make a treasure for now. Don't think I need the Shapeshifter. And then, yeah, let's Crippling Fear. Naming Crab. Attack for one. Our opponent doesn't need to know we're a demon deck yet. Spiteful Sliver, we can still Fatal Push if needed. But it seems time to play Contract, and then from now on probably only make Treasure so we don't lose too much life. Okay, we can play Outcast, although might be better saving the Treasure. And then let's just Fatal Push now, so I don't have to discard to hand size. Fountain can gain some life back. And then we still have another Crippling Fear for next turn, perhaps. Could be that to Haste Sliver plus something else, but nope, just a Diffusion. So we have two more Demons in hand, that will make it three. So play Automaton, play one mana Automaton, and Blade. And then we should get there next turn, assuming no a lethal force of Slivers. Alright, let's cross our fingers. Sliver Hive can make tokens. The fusion attacks. And a chance for glory. What is this? Everyone's playing chance for glory today. They don't want to lose to my Liliana's contract, losing to the instant instead. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine if we can hit a few land drops for contract. Curving one, two, and three mana demons. Opponent on the red deck with crash through. So a third land goes a long way. Festival Crasher can hit very hard. For now, play Pretender first. And then we may need to Crippling Fear, especially if they play another similar creature. Soulscar Mage. And Arcanists, alright. A land 4, please. That'll do. No demons on the other side. Back for six, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hands, not the best, but seems keepable. A couple removal spells, and then Varagoth to find contract. Sigarda's eight means our opponent's on a hammer deck. Lurus as companion, and yeah, they've got the setup here. I'll wait for them to play hammer and then kill the Ornithopter. Ingenious Smith, pretty good in the meantime. But at least fails to find. Not gonna bother killing Ingenious Smith. Can play Changeling. Keep up at least one removal spell. And then hope to keep hitting our land drops so we can eventually play a 3 drop while having removal up. Could of course also take a hit from the hammer, but if I can avoid taking. 10 damage, that's probably for the best. Okay, there's Hammer. Wait for them to target Ornithopter. And then we'll cut it down. I guess Fatal Push would have been the safer play in case they had a second Hammer. Now Outfitter, so Hammer can equip for 1 mana. Yeah, that's uh, not what we wanted to see. So I guess we'll play Varagoth and then just trade for the opponent's creature. Since they'll be able to keep equipping the hammer over and over. But with Lurus as companion, they'll eventually get their creatures back, so probably not going to be able to keep up with it. Smith attacks. Yeah, I'll take the trade. Shadow Spear for Trample, still trade. They can equip the Outfitter. Okay, can play Pretender, keep a Fatal Push, and then I'll need to draw a bunch more Fatal Pushes of Contracts if we want to have a shot. Another Outfitter to discount Shadow Spear. Does mean they have another Warm Body to equip with a Colossus Hammer as well. So it seems inevitable that I'm gonna eventually die to the Hammer. As we don't have any ways to destroy artifacts. Yeah, Sigardus 8 was manageable, Outfitter perpetually changing the mana cost, not so much. So we take 13, down to 4. We do not have a Fatal Push in hand. So, now what? Play Fountain up to six, and then I can contract again, hope to find Fatal Push, since a Death Toucher doesn't help against Trample anyway. Um, it's not like I can present enough toughness between Varagoth and Automaton, can I? This will eventually grow up to a 5-5, five, five. this a 3-4, this just a 2-2, two, two. so that's six plus five, eleven toughness. 
I guess that keeps me alive. But it also means having to trade away all my creatures. But maybe that's still the way to go. As opposed to contract and then just hope for the best. This at least technically guarantees me to survive. Opponent attacks. So do I have to jump with all three? If I, let's say, just block with these two, nine toughness. Opponent still tramples for four down to two. So maybe I should just block with two of them. So we're at two. And Ornithopter can also be equipped here. We'll lose flying, but they can still give a trample. All right, I think that's game. Play agents. Find outcast. Yeah, we have our four demons in play. Sadly, contract triggers at the beginning of our upkeep and not at the end of our turn. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand, no real interaction, but we'll give it a shot. Got some life gain, agent to find a second demon, automaton to pump them up. Turn one inspector. Now Varagoth can potentially boast to find our contract. Charming Prince, so opponents maybe a flicker deck. Could be mono white, could be blue white. Crippling Fear will come in handy. No turn to play. And now a Skyclave to exile automaton. So I could play Varagoth. I am planning to probably Crippling Fear next turn, so I may not be boasting then, but I think that's still okay. If there's another Skyclave, so be it. Inspiring Overseer instead. Okay, so this Crippling Fear is looking good. Or I can attack and boast, get my contract, and then uh, we can either contract next turn or Crippling Fear to reset the board. Let's make sure we get our contract while we can. Not under too much pressure yet, but if they add another creature, I might have to Crippling Fear. Expert sees two lanes. And a Charming Prince could flicker Apparition to Exile Vergoth. But yeah, that's why we boasted in the meantime. So I could potentially just play Contract to be mana efficient. Or we could Crippling Fear, leaving us in a pretty good position. In case of another discard effect or two. And then now I should name Illusion. Okay. Bellhaunt can make me discard. Could play Automaton naming Illusion here, but we're probably still better off going for Demons, and then Agent is a 2 for 1. And Inspector. Alright, opponent's empty handed, can play Contract. And draw a bunch, play Fountain first, so I can still play a black 1 drop if needed. Cut down, can kill Thraven Inspector, and that's about it. Fatal push we could have enabled by chumping with a 1-1 one -one and then killing the bell haunt, but that's fine. So we've got contracts, no demons yet. 
And now we can just double block the Bell Haunt as well. Another Charming Prince. Probably Flicker's Bell Haunt. Sure. And then cut down the Charming Prince. And discard. Maybe a Faceless Agent. Since it's a bit redundant with the one we have. So play Mimic, naming Demon now. Play Agent. And Outcast, so we're just one Demon away from winning with Contract. And Castle will be a useful card draw engine. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a bit light on uh, card draw and contracts, but we have a castle eventually. Also no real interaction, so a bit of a gamble, but we'll give it a shot. At least we have lands and spells. Depending on the matchup, I might want to play a turn 2 Devourer. In case we do top that contract, I can foretell it. Although, of course, Blade applies quite a bit more pressure, so still go for Blade. Their opponent Black Whites, Priests. Alright, so it's one of those decks that's gonna give the Priest all sorts of abilities. And they found Flying, Death Touch, Hexproof, Indestructible, and a Lifelink. Alright, so racing this is going to be impossible, but good thing we picked up Contract. Slightly regretting not playing Dream Devourer now. So, this is going to hit us for 2, and gain 2. And Gift of Estates to find more planes. Yeah, I don't think they ever show you the cards revealed to give those abilities, but I'm sure... There's uh, quite a few creatures that have several abilities. The indestructible lands also help. So I can foretell Liliana's Contracts and Black Market Connections if I'd like, and then next turn play both. Connections makes our Shapeshifter. So we can try and set up the win in two turns. Just hoping they don't have answers to my contract. Nighthawk Scavenger has three different abilities, so that one makes sense. Okay, play contracts. And can uh, potentially cut down the Scavenger. And still play connections. Now connections is not going to make a token and then win the game with contracts, since contracts only goes on the stack if there are four demons in play. The same reason why we don't have any muta vaults in our mana base. We wouldn't have the window to activate muta vault to get the extra demon in play. Sparring Regimen could find an answer to Contract. Nope, just goes for a discard and draw. And Nightfall Predator, another one that makes a lot of sense. Flying Death Touch Hexproof. So probably don't even need the Shapeshifter here. Let's just make a treasure since we have two more demons we can add to the board. And these two can attack. Ooh, opponent's got a Fragment Reality. Okay, that's uh, gonna replace it with a 1-drop. Another Outcast. So yeah, I may regret not making a Shapeshifter now, if they have another removal spell. So I can channel Abandoned Mire for 3 mana thanks to my Legendary. Although there's currently no demons in the graveyard, so we'd have to mill one. And does our opponent have removal? If not, contract wins the game. Angel of Unity, that's fine. So this one flying and lifelink. 
that one we can fatal push heal it as well all right so unless their last card is another fragment reality we should be good to go just in case we'll channel pick up metallic mimic and contract wins the game awesome yeah contracts definitely a feasible alternate win condition these days with all the cheap changelings and demons they've printed over the last couple of years definitely much more realistic than before when most demons cost three or four mana at the very least so definitely a fun casual deck, not going to be very competitive on the ranked ladder, so I would never play it there since it's going to get slaughtered by the tier 1 decks. But as kind of a casual option, if you like demons, why not give it a go? So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.